Broncos fans, to start the video, go ahead and type 5 for Teddy Bridgewater's number down below in the comment section to send Teddy some get well wishes. While the intro video rolls, drop your 5s down below. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown, recapping the Bengals-Broncos Week 15 matchup. A lot to unpack. We'll touch on, of course, the big news, Teddy Bridgewater, the latest news we have on his injury status, and then we'll dive into Drew Locke, this defense that played... I don't know if surprisingly well is a good way to put it, but definitely overcheat my expectations for Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase is offense. Let's kick things off by Bridgewater, though. Let's get into that injury update. Latest I'm seeing right now is Vic Fangio just said in his press conference that Teddy Bridgewater will remain overnight in a hospital. If you missed it, Bridgewater took a nasty hit diving for the first down, went airborne, came down sort of on the front of his head, kind of had some contact behind him. It's difficult to recreate. I tweeted it out at my Twitter handle, at Matthew Petey, if you want to go check it out there. But head and neck injury, Drew Locke came in. All we hope for this point is that Bridgewater will be okay and that we'll see him back on the field soon because Bridgewater, we know, has had a very rough, long history with injuries going back to his rookie for his first couple years in Minnesota. As for the full recap here, Bengals knocking off the Broncos by five in what really felt like a playoff game. We'll look at the whole playoff picture later on, but it did have a big feel of win or go home because these two teams entered the day with the same record, tiebreaker implications on the line, and Cincinnati finds a way to pull out the win even when they're not at their best, and that's what's frustrating. And I think this is what we're seeing is the rotation of the defense does their job, but the offense can't score more than 15 points at home. Come on, oh man. Drew Locke, what was the last play? I understand, like, fourth and 24, but at least throw it in bounds. At least give your receiver a chance for two things to happen. One, he makes a great play and makes a great catch. Or two, pass interference is called. But throwing it out of bounds, what, was, what does that do? I mean, as a whole, he came in and delivered a dart to Tim Patrick, went off for a touchdown. Look at his stats through uh, the second half of the game when he came in. 50% completion percentage, went 6 for 12, threw for 88 yards, but two bonehead plays. One was the fumble where, got to get bigger hands. I mean, it was way too easy for the Bengals defender, just ripped him out at the goal line, essentially, in the red zone. And then the end there where Vic Vangio, and we'll talk about his time management in just a second, but... Bridgewater Locke just tosses it out of bounds on fourth down. It, it's just so frustrating to see because I want to see Drew Locke, Locke succeed. You always want that when you draft a quarterback in the first or second round, but it just doesn't seem like it's in the cards for Drew. Here's my question, though. How confident are you in Drew Locke? Because it appears Bridgewater, in my opinion, he ain't playing anytime soon. I hope I can eat those words and I'm wrong, but it just doesn't seem like an easy path for him to come out next Sunday. So scale up for me 1 to 10. This will be the video's pinned comment. So if a YouTube ad break hits you right now, scroll on down with a 1 or maybe your Drew Locke's mom and you want to give him a 9 because I don't think even she could give him a 10 after Sunday. Let me know what you're thinking down below. Vic, Victor, Vicathy, whatever you want to talk, call you, I, 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 I kind of backpiled on my stance of got to fire Fangio because I got my head around, keep Fangio, let him run the defense, which look what the defense has done. It was a bunch of no-namers from the beginning of the year, and they limited the Bengals to 15 points. But at the end of the day, if your offense can't score more than one touchdown, you won't have a job for long. And then the timeouts. The first half was a little questionable. There's some people saying, no, wait for the end of the first half. Don't use them, you know, earlier in the, inside the two-minute warning. Whatever, tomato, tomato. But at the end there, if you missed it, the Bengals had Joe Mixon go down with about two minutes and 35 seconds. Now, Vic Vangel calls a timeout. Now, luckily, he gets bailed out, and they return the timeout to him because of the injured Bengal anyway. But then he calls a timeout, which didn't make any sense because the play clock can only run for 40 seconds. So you know that if there's less than 40 seconds before the two-minute warning, you might as well let them go to the two-minute warning. And whatever the difference is, let's say it's 30 seconds left, you save 10 seconds. 
Because when the two-minute warning is over and you can't call a timeout, they're going to go the full 40 seconds. It's just mistakes like that that in year almost at the end of year three, it's inexcusable. It really is inexcusable. Broncos fans, I know you're not giving up on this team whatsoever, so subscribe if you love the Broncos through the ups and the downs because we do here at the Broncos Breakdown. We're putting out news and rumors content all year long, so here's my little pitch to you. Subscribe to the channel. That way, at least you get the chance to see a video that looks entertaining. You can click on it. If you don't want to watch it, then don't watch it. No big deal, but at least afford yourself the chance to be like, oh, there's a trade rumor with Russell Wilson out there? Yeah, I'll watch that. Subscribe so at least you're staying up to date on on the team all year long. I just want to give this guy a shout out, okay? Big Al O, because he has kind of come and go in times this year, paired with Noah Fant, but he had a great game today. He really did. The way that he can just stretch the field at times and be a big tight end, but move like a cat, it gets you excited about what you can see in the future from Albert. We also have some great stuff going on with our friends at Fanatics. We'll pause on the recap for a second and tell you about this awesome deal going on where you can get these two polos 50% off, whether you want it in blue or orange, whatever it is, it's $35 at chatsports.com slash Denver Polo. I got that one down below in the comments and the description of this video, so make sure you check it out right there. Get yourself hooked up with this sweet polo going on at Fanatics. The Broncos offense, it was just very ill-prepared. Pat Shermer has proven to be a bad offensive coordinator throughout the course of the season, plain and simple. But the way that this team looked so dejected after the first quarter and a half was over, it was 3-0 Cincinnati, but you would have thought it was 24-0 if you were just following the game on Twitter because this offense had no rhythm whatsoever and no run game at the start. And then finally they go to the run game and they have success. And then the other thing about this offense, Jerry Judy, no receptions. He gets his first target slash reception at the end in that kind of garbage time where they accepted the penalty instead. But Cortland Sutton, once again, MIA. Two receptions, 14 yards. The last couple weeks, uh, GM George Payton has invested a lot in Patrick Sutton. And, of course, he didn't draft Judy. But, Judy, your first-round pick. And you're just not getting with the investment you put into them. And I don't think it's all on them. At a certain point, the wide receiver's got to step up a little bit. But, like, Cortland Sutton, for example, made what was a great opportunity for himself and Drew Locke to move the chains. And instead, what What happens? Um, it's a bad la bad pass from Drew Lock behind Cortland Sutton, and the Broncos are punting. Shout out to Sam Martin, by the way, because he was probably the MVP of today up until the Tim Patrick touchdown reception because all the Broncos did was three and out and punt, three and out and punt. On the defensive side of things, I'm very excited for the future of this defense. They are young, and they are competitive, okay? And once again, props to Peyton because he drafted a couple studs later in the draft that are really come to play. When you're a leading tackler, and granted, you're also missing three out of your four starting linebackers from week one, is Baron Browning a seventh-round draft pick? and he's having a great day at the office, you got to be excited about not only what to expect from the future of these guys, but what to expect from more draft picks because the Broncos, Jonathan Cooper, and we'll talk about him in a moment, are just hitting on these later round draft picks. But grade the Broncos' Week 15 performance for me. Let me know what you want to give them. A, B, C, D, or F. I'd be hard-pressed to find anyone giving them an A, but I could talk myself into a C C-plus because at least the defense held them to 15 points, and then if Bridgewater doesn't go down and this offense starts to get into a rhythm as the game goes on, maybe they find a second touchdown and win the game. I, I wouldn't rule that out of the realm of possibility whatsoever. But going back to Jonathan Cooper, it's it just when you watch him play, he makes key plays at key situations. Five tackles my ass. One of those tackles came at the very end of the game. Some RJ P. Ryan trying to pick up a first down to ice the game. A little bit of an open field tackle, and Cooper brings him down. And it's a third-round pick that just gets you going of, wow, this is going to be a fun linebacker duo in years to come because Baron Browning, his teammate from Ohio State too, also having a great kind of couple weeks now. Once he's gotten more opportunities to step in after, of course, the Johnson and the Jewel injury and then Von Miller goes away, you're getting to see more and more of these younger guys that have simply been flat out balling out and performing. Once again, 15-10 the final. I'm looking at a couple things here. Joe Burrow, you held him to under 160 yards, and you don't get much out of it. 
you don't get a win. That's just sadly a huge miss. But let's switch gears. Let's go to the AFC playoff picture. See where Denver stands now. After a bulk of the games are done, now keep in mind we have two Monday night games and two Thursday night games. So four more plus Sunday night as we are filming right now. Two Tuesday night games. The Denver Broncos sit kind of in the back there, 7-7. Seven and seven. Their only way in is winning out. And that comes against two playoff teams right now. The Chiefs, the Chargers, and the Raiders. And then of those three games, two of them are on the road. It is taller than a mile-high mountain to climb right now, and to my, for my mind, to get in if you're the Broncos because you don't have tiebreakers over the Bengals now and over the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Browns and the Ravens. So you need a lot to go your way. But let me ask you this. Will the Broncos make the playoffs? Why for yes and for no? Are you still in on them? Maybe they can find a way to go on a run at the end, but it seems too little too late right now. This was a must-win game for two reasons. A loss puts you down to the standings, and you lose a tiebreaker to another wildcard competitive team. It kind of feels like you lost two games, whereas if you won, you feel like you won two games. So I think it's win out or bust for the Broncos, and I think that's true for Vic Fangio as well. If he wants to keep his job, they have to win out and make the playoffs. And that's the only way I'm seeing it. So win out or bust for me, no doubt about it. Because if the Broncos don't make the playoffs, I, it's just tough to envision a head coach keeping his job after three years of no playoff appearances. What's unfortunate is that I was I've kind of I went from no firing Fangio just yet to like yeah it's got to change. And the clock management today kind of reinforced that. And the lack of preparation on offense it kind of felt like. And just like the tempo of that drive right before the half ended. Get a move on. Come on. But. Maybe GM George Payton wants to keep Fangio around, trade for Wilson or Rodgers, and go, hey, Fangio, you just run the defense. We'll hire a better OC, and together, that's going to be a pretty good duo. Before we wrap up the video, if you've already subscribed to the channel, we appreciate you so much. But if you have not already, send it to a couple of friends. Show them the recap. Get them in on the Broncos breakdown. That way, like I said, when a video comes across your timeline or your feed that looks interesting, at least you're going to have the eyeballs on it to click on it. Give yourself the chance to stay up to date on the latest Broncos news and rumors all year long.